let's look at Euler's totient function and some of the characteristics we saw. So the totient, by definition, is the count of numbers less than n which are relatively prime with n. So you need an algorithm that if you have some value n that you look at the values from 1 up until n minus 1, check which of those are relatively prime with n and then count those numbers and you get your answer of the totient function. But there are some shortcuts. So as you, we saw in the example, we had the totient of, uh, for example, 24. You need to manually go through and count the numbers and look at them. If the totient, the, if n is 1, the totient of 1, we always get 1. If n is a prime number, some prime number p, then using this, this approach, because we have a prime number p, its divisors are 1 and p, so all the numbers less than p, 1 up to p minus 1, will be relatively prime with it. So therefore, the totient of any prime number is simply p minus 1. It's easy to calculate. And if it's not a prime number, unless it matches one, some of our other criteria, it's generally hard to calculate. That is, it not only hard for you to calculate manually, it's hard for a computer to calculate. That is, if, if n is a very large number, again we talk about hundreds of digits long, then it's hard for a computer to calculate what is the totient of n in some reasonable time. That is, it takes forever. There are no known algorithms for calculating it unless we have one of these shortcuts. And we'll see that that's, that's used as one of the secur security features. Another shortcut is if n, the totient of n, where n is made from multiplying two prime numbers, p and q, then the totient of n is the totient of p multiplied by the totient of q. And the totient of p, if p is a prime number, is p minus 1. So that's this part here. And the totient of q, if q is a prime number, is q minus 1. So another shortcut we have is if we know n is made up by multiplying two primes together, then we can quickly calculate the totient of n. So an example. Uh, let's just scroll back and see some of our prime numbers. So some of the prime numbers here, uh, let's say we have 191 and 79. Let's choose two prime numbers, 191 and 79. I choose two prime numbers. Choose n is the multiplication of those numbers. And I need my calculator. I have a calculator. What is it? 191 times 79. 15168. Thank you. 15089. So, in this case, the totient of 15089, I challenge you in the exam to calculate it manually. That is, look at all the numbers up to 15088 and determine which ones are relatively prime with 15089. It will take you a long time on a piece of paper. All right, a computer can do it because it's not so large. But the shortcut is, at, since we know n is m the multiplication of two primes, in fact, the answer is the totient of p 
multiplied by the totient of Q in this case, which is the totient of 191 multiplied by the totient of 79. And because they are prime numbers, it's 190 times 78. Whichever, whatever that value is, I'll calculate in a moment. So if we do know that n is made up by multiplying two primes, we can calculate easily using this formula. Similarly, if we know that n is a prime number, easy to calculate. Otherwise, hard to calculate. And especially for very large numbers, impossible to calculate in a reasonable time. There are no known algorithms that will calculate within a reasonable time. So 190 by 78. 190 by 78, 14820. So there are some properties of the totient function that are in fact used in the encryption algorithms. Any questions on how to determine the totient of some number, Euler's totient? We've just got two theorems to present and then we're, we're done. So they are the, the, the shortcuts, I call them, that we are useful. We're going to present two theorems, and again, they are used in, a diff in different ciphers. I'm not going to attempt to prove them or e explain how they're derived. We're just going to present them. You see in, in, in an exam, they are given, I, I think, in most cases. So present them and give some examples of how they're used. When we look at our ciphers after the midterm, we'll see where they become important, these theorems. Let's just introduce them. First one, Fermat's theorem. And in fact, it can be viewed in different, two different forms. We'll go through both. If we have a prime number p and some integer, some positive integer a that is not divisible by p, then Fermat showed that if we take a and raise it to the power of p minus 1 and mod by p, the answer is 1. That is, we have a prime number, 11, for example. P is 11. And some integer a, which is not divisible by p, so we have some a being, well, in simple case, uh, 4. Then 4 to the power of 11 minus 1, 4 to the power of 10, mod 11 will be 1. That's all it tells us. It's not hard to rearrange that or to consider a variation of that uh, which is sometimes useful. If p is prime and a is any positive integer, then it also turns out that a to the power of p equals a in mod p. So that is p if p is a prime number. All we'll do is give an example uh, to show, well, not to prove it's true, but sh show one or two cases just to see how it's used. So an example, let's say, for example, we have um, in mod 7, so 
the, if the question is 5 to the power of 7 mod 7, what is the answer? You can manually calculate this. There are small numbers, you can use a calculator to calculate it. If they were big numbers, your calculator would not handle them. So in the exam, if I give you much larger numbers, even if you have a calculator, it will not handle them. In this case, easy. But if you see that it matches or fits the format of Fermat's theorem, then you take advantage of that. So let's look at the Fermat's theorem, which says in the second case, if p is a prime number, then some integer to the power of that prime number mod that prime number is simply that integer. a to the power of p mod p equals a. That's what that tells us. a to the power of p is equivalent to a when we're using mod p as the arithmetic. And that's what we have in our example. We have a equal to 7, p equal, uh, a equal to 5, p equal to 7. A is 5 in this case, if we match it to that theorem. P is 7. So we could write it in the format of, what do we get? A to the power of P. And according to Fermat's theorem, if we're using mod P, that should be equivalent to A. And when I write 5 to the power of 7 mod 7, then another way to write it is a to the oh, 5 to the power of 7 and in here brackets mod 7. So 5 to the power of 7 mod 7 will be, what's the answer? Five. We have 5 to the power of 7 is equivalent to 5 when it's, we're using modular arith arithmetic mod 7. So we just, we can use Fermat's theorem here if we have some problem that fits the format. So you can use it as a shortcut to find the answer. Of course in this case you could have used your calculator and found what is 5 to the power of 7. You find it is, I've done it before, 5 to the power of 7 is 78,125, then you mod by 7 and you get 5. But if it's in the form of Fermat's theorem, then you immediately know it's 5 is the answer. This becomes useful again when we deal with large numbers. A large number, hundreds of digits long, to the power of another large number, very hard to calculate and then do the modulus. Unless it's matching this structure, in which case we can immediately get the answer. So that's just an example of how we can apply Fermat's theorem. It has two formats and it depends upon which one's uh, more convenient to use. They, they both hold. The last one is Euler's theorem and it makes use of Euler's totian function. For every a and n that are relatively prime, a to the power of the totient of n is equivalent to 1 in mod n. And another way to express that, and I think this is uh, missing still, for positive integers a and n, they still need to be relatively prime. I don't know why I haven't said that. So still relatively prime, but it's just another way to write this. a to the power of the totient of n plus 1 equals a in mod n. Again, uh, no attempt to explain or to derive this. Uh, we will see it later when we look at RSA and public key cryptography or asymmetric cri cryptography and how it's used to provide uh, the features of security 
in ciphers. One example, a couple of examples on that one. Say a thousand and twenty four mod eleven, a simple case, and you could solve this manually quite easily, but we could use Euler's theorem here. <laughs> Uh, and note, what do we have? 1024 is in fact 2 to the power of 10. So it's also 2 to the power of 10 mod 11. And also note that the totient of 11 equals, equals 10. 11 is a prime number, the totient of that will be 10. So what we have is 2 to the power of the totient of 11 mod 11. And now compare that to Euler's theorem. 2 to the power of the totient of 11 mod 11 should be what? So just a, a simple example, the showing that if we can express our question or our, our um, problem in the format of either Fermat's theorem or Euler's theorem, then we may be able to solve it faster than having to manually calculate the ex exponential and, and calculating the modulus. 2 to the power of the totient of 11 mod 11 Fermat, uh, Euler's theorem says a to the power of the totient of n mod n is 1 if a and n are relatively prime. Is 2 relatively prime with 11? Yes it is because their greatest common divisor is 1. Therefore this fits the format of Euler's theorem therefore the answer is 1. Because we, just as a reminder, Euler's theorem says a to the, the totient of n equals 1 when we mod by n. Assuming a and n are relatively prime. You can use this to solve, as we've said, to solve large problems, exponentials and modula, uh, modulus when we have larger numbers. The other form one more example using the second form here. A, if we have a to the totient of n plus 1, if we mod by n, again assuming a and n are relatively prime, we should get a as an answer. Let's try one. Uh, 
have an answer. Five to the power of nine mod twenty four. Let's calculate it first in the, the full approach. So I'll use my calculator to calculate that and then we'll check whether it fits the format of Euler's theorem. So five to the power of nine mod twenty four. Using my calculator, I have to set the scale. So I can do modulus. Five to the power of nine mod 24 according to my calculator if it calculates manually is 20 is, is 5 5 to the power of 9 is 1953125 and then if you mod by 24 the answer is 5 and we see that because it fits Euler's theorem the second form because we see Recall that the totient of 24, we calculated before the break, was 8. So in fact what we get is 5 to the power of the totient of 24 plus 1 mod 24, which fits the structure of Euler's theorem, the second the second form. A to the power of the totient of n plus 1 equals A in mod n. Assuming A is relatively prime with n. In this, in this case 5 is relatively prime with 24. That was using this equation. <coughs> so the point is you can use these theorems to solve some problems as opposed to manually calculating or fully calculating first the exponential and then the, uh, the mod. You'll see in exams it's faster to use the theorem than to try your calculator. Especially if you've got a large number, large numbers here. You find your calculator will not be accurate or will not give, uh, it will start to round once you get to 12 digits. When you've got a large number to the exp 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 with a large exponent, the result will be very large and your calculator may not handle it. And hence using one of the Euler's theorem or, or even Fermat's theorem can be useful. I'll talk about the exam in, in a moment. So yes, I'll answer that. Um, let's finish on this topic so we can talk about the exam. Any questions on what we've gone through today? Not about the exam, but what we've gone through in modular arithmetic. We've gone through, we went through the first four operations. We haven't gone through exponentiation and log, logarithms and we will not go through them in detail. Exponentiation is simple, it's just, it's just repeated multiplications. So the same rules apply as in our normal arithmetic. Logarithms, which is, are the inverse operations of exponentiation, uh, again we need to do some, uh, well, we had the multiplicative inverse, the additive inverse, we need to do some operations to calculate an, a logarithm. It's much more complex and we'll go through them after the midterm. It will not be covered in the exam. It needs a bit more time and we need to go through some other examples beforehand. But we will cover those last two operations at a later date. So we're going to finish here. So we've gone through the operations for modular arithmetic up to division and importantly we've introduced things like relatively prime Euler's totient function, 
and two, two theorems we've presented or given to you that may be useful. Any questions on this topic before we stop? <laughs>